Uh, next, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Ibrahim Sharik. Um, uh, good evening, Ibrahim. Hi. We're very pleased to have you. This is a first at IFAS to have someone uh, participate in a panel via Skype. <laughs> Uh, we we uh, ask that everyone bear with us, but everything seems to be working. We look forward to to your perspective uh, regarding uh, issues of uh, reconciliation, the peace process, and the and the youth movement. So welcome, and uh, we look forward to your comments. Thank you very much, Michael. Hello, everyone. Hello, Washington D.C. Um, I am very pleased to be with you here from Doha. From 85 uh, degrees temperature here in Doha, I'm uh, very pleased to be with you. So thank you for inviting me again. Um, uh, well, I would like to thank my colleagues in Washington for uh, emphasizing very important aspects of this uh, transitional process that uh, Yemen is going through. Um, and I will try to touch on aspects of the national reconciliation process uh, that uh, is needed uh, right after now having a new president in place. Uh, first, I would like to emphasize that with all the reservations over the uh, GCC initiative that provided the framework for this transition, uh, it is important to, uh, to, to see this as, as an opportunity as well. Uh, this uh, initiative provides an opportunity for, uh, transitional, uh, for, for transition in Yemen and for uh, providing uh, the opportunity for uh, avoiding the country uh, any sort of uh, a civil war or instability or uh, any sort of that. So uh, this, again, should be seen as an opportunity and for all the parties to embark on and for all the parties uh, to realize uh, that uh, they can really take advantage of that and can uh, save Yemen um, any instability in the future. Uh, there are a number of aspects in this transitional uh, uh, process that uh, are necessary going or moving forward after having a new president in place. And the very first aspect that I would like to touch on is the aspect of uh, ownership ownership of this uprising in Yemen that lasted for, uh, oh, for almost a year. Um, as you all know, uh, there have been many parties that intervened to uh, different levels uh, in this, uh, during the uprising, whether it's the Gulf countries or the Security Council or others. This, uh, once for, for all, should be realized as an ownership the Yemenis. This is an uprising of the Yemenis, and it's important for them to feel that this is their own uprising. Uh, the concept of ownership is necessary for the sustainability of the Yemenis co national collaboration between all parties in Yemen to, to ensure that because it's theirs, that it's important for them to protect it and to make sure that they do the most or the best they can to ensure that they keep on it. So the feeling or the sense of ownership is necessary here as part of the national reconciliation process and in the new phase of transition in Yemen. The second concept, uh, which my colleague in Washington emphasized strongly, and I can't agree with him uh, more on this, which is the transitional justice. As you can, as you probably all know, uh, the uprisings in the Arab region took different paths in dealing with peace and justice. In, and uh, we see in Egypt that uh, they're trying regime figures for now. In, uh, in Libya, there, is a, there was a pursuit of justice and eradication of the entire regime. In Tunisia, president escaped and so forth. But in Yemen, Yemen is providing a different approach. And we never know, but this might prove to be actually the most sustainable approach. And probably as its coordinated uh, uh, approach of transition might prove to be really sustainable. It's extremely important is to deal with the criticism here that, um, that is usually mentioned uh, as uh, for the GCC initiative of sacrifice justice for peace. We can still uh, achieve uh, uh, some justice here, 
Um, and we don't, I rushed into, into the transitional justice here and of trying, you know, in the regime individuals and so forth. But there is, I would like to emphasize, there are some aspects that we can do here. Are, are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, just to make sure. Um, so there are some aspects here of transitional justice that can still be achieved. And in particular, I would like to emphasize the need for the Yemeni people to know. They need to know what happened over the past uh, the couple of decades. They need to know what happened under Saleh. They need to know about uh, these important steps that uh, are uh, in the national uh, memory, in the national conscience of the Yemeni people. What happened about 94, 1994, about the 90, 1990, about uh, the human rights violation that they were committed. So the right to know is something that can be tolerated at this point, and we can pursue this through the establishments of truth commission and committees or um, other forms of um, achieving some transitional justice. The third aspect of Ibrahim, if I could, if Ibrahim, if I could ask you to to hold one moment. We're trying to uh, fix a technical issue. Um, I appreciate your patience and everyone else's patience, as I know it's sure. difficult to listen to this. Although any of us have been on Skype calls, we've all experienced this. Uh, uh, so we're, we're, this is nothing new. Uh, however, for this audience, uh, we had a request that we mute your speakers in Doha. So there's no feedback from your end. If you could mute your speakers, turn off your speakers. Okay. We hope that'll help and uh, ask you to continue. I uh, hope that'll help. Ibrahim? Okay, great. The third aspect of the national reconciliation process, it should be um, an inclusive process. As you know, the GCC initiative was signed between the, uh, the, pre the former president, the regime, and uh, the parliamentary oppositions, known to be the joint meeting parties. It excluded many parties, many important parties in Yemen, and in particular the youth uh, that they have been protesting for, for months in the uh, change square and uh, to a large extent some important figures in the uh, Al-Hirak movement in the south and Al-Houthis in the north and other important uh, players uh, also in the Yemeni political scene. So. The fact that it, the process, the signing process, excluded a number of important parties and important players, I think those parties should be included in the implementation and moving forward. It does not help the national reconciliation process and the transition, uh, uh, the transition in Yemen to continue to exclude these important players. So we need to reach out. To the, uh, to the to the to the al-Hirak, to the uh, uh, Houthis, and to others as well, to the youth, and to make to ensure that they're part of the political process that the GCC initiative uh, created. Uh, the fourth aspect uh, of the national reconciliation process that we need to emphasize here is the confidence-building measures that should be taken. The new president needs to start this immediately. Um, and the Yemenis, especially that there is, we're still talking about a significant part of the country that they have no serious or solid trust in the political process. So they need to be assured and they need to be assured by the highest level of authority in the country, in particular, the new elected president and other important uh, uh, players in the Yemeni political scene. And here I can give um, an example and emphasize actually uh, the acknowledgement of the grievances of the, uh, of the Southerners and the uh, acknowledgement of the grievances of, Al of Al Houthis as well. Um, it will be very misleading to continue to treat these grievances as they do not exist or as part of a rebellion against uh, the central capital in Sana'a. That does not help the national reconciliation process. And uh, how we can um, acknowledge these grievances? It's very simple. Important uh, uh, politicians, for example, Ali Mohsen al Ahmar, who led uh, four or five wars against the Houthis, 
a statement from Ali Muhsin al-Ahmar to recognize or to acknowledge the legitimate grievances of al-Houthis, for example, uh, would really assure them and would invite them uh, would, uh, for a very serious invitation for al-Houthis to be part of the political process, since that they have shown uh, uh, hesitation to a high degree of being included or being part of the political process, uh, that uh, it does not help to continue to ignore the uh, economic, cultural, and the political grievances of the uh, southerners as well. So to recognize that they have an issue, and uh, these are legitimate concerns that they're having, and can can be dealt with within a new framework that the reconciliation process can provide would definitely assure them and build these confidence building measures that they can build on. Number five, we need to change the dynamics in which that we are communicating between the new leadership and the southerners, the youth, and the Houthis. The current uh, dynamics or the current communications that we're having, we're uh, communic communicating through the media uh, publicly and through protests and uh, through uh, uh, making uh, inflammatory statements by different parties. That does not help. We need to change this. The president in particular, the new president needs to change this, need to reach out um, to the uh, oppositions and to, uh, to, to change these dynamics. Also, Al-Hiraq on their part bear, bear responsibility for this. They need to change this, uh, these dynamics of in-group, out-group, that we're the southerners and the northerners as the occupiers. That does not help. The Houthis also need to change um, you know, their, their uh, constant accusation of the entire process as an American process. And this is an American solution that, it, uh, that it's being imposed in Yemen. Uh, with certain assurances by the political leadership, Al-Houthis might be convinced to change this, uh, to change and to start communicating uh, on a different level. And number six I, uh, uh, of this process that we uh, certainly need to emphasize, which is uh, for, uh, for the oppositions in particular, unity is an abstract for them. So uh, to change this abstract, and I'll explain what I mean by this, we need to engage, and the president, the new president in particular, need to, engage, to uh, launch an aggressive outreach campaign uh, about the education, about educating the parties about the unity, benefits of uh, unity of Yemen. Uh, these groups, the and southerners and the youth, they treat Yemen as the Yemen that they live under Saleh. They have not experienced a new democratic and pluralistic Yemen. They need to be they need to be educated about a new framework that can be created and can address these their, their concerns and their grievances. We can't blame them for now because that's what they've experienced over the past 20 years is about uh, uh, violent confrontations, wars in Sada, and war with the South. So they need to be, we, we need to have this um, uh, ed, uh, outreach campaign, uh, educational campaign uh, to, uh, to educate them about what they can achieve and how their uh, uh, demands can be met in, in a new democratic and pluralistic Yemen. And finally, uh, the youth uh, here, uh, we need to know about, to keep in mind about the youth that we do not really have a distinct youth party that is called, this is the youth party. The youth are represented in their political parties, so we do not, they do not ex stand as a completely independent political party from the rest of the political uh, mosaic of Yemen. They are uh, part of this uh, political parties. And their political parties, the leaders of their political parties, can reach out to them, include them. And uh, for the youth, it's important to emphasize that we have a transparent process. And I think if they see a transparent process, okay. Ibrahim, they're part of it. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much.